for the basketball, Vermont, the reigning champs in their first home game of America East play. This UMBC team has lost 21 games in a row against UVM, but they've got a, a talented squad this year, the best player in the league offensively, and they think they can come in here and get a victory. Yes, they do. The, you know, you can just see in their warm-ups the senior leadership, especially in the backcourt, and as you mentioned, Jarius Lyles, just a, a player that Vermont is going to have to pay so much attention to, scoring 21 points a game. Finding him in transition is going to be huge, and it's going to be interesting on early on. How is Vermont going to defend him? You know, with the ball screens, are they going to double team? Are they going to run somebody at him? So just kind of the game within the game is how Vermont defends Lyles early. He scores 21 points a game. That's the top mark in the league and top 30 in the country. He's also the conference leader in steals. There's not much he can't do. For the UVM Catamounts uh, coming off a win over UMass Lowell, they're all about balance, and this is their third game without Anthony Lamb. They've tried to have different guys step up. Last game it was Ernie Duncan with 32. Yes, Ernie just uh, so efficient, you know, uh, the way he scored the basketball. 10 of 11, 5 of 6 from 3, 7 of 7, 32 points. You know, only two turnovers in 33 minutes. Just a, just a tremendous game offensively. And you just kind of see as he matures and plays more, he's he just so much more aggressive offensively. And it just, uh, it's nice to see. And, you know, he's a hard worker and, uh, um, you know, paid dividends against Lowell the other night. Also, Drew Arcart coming up huge in that game. Career high 19, 12 rebounds. He's the guy that stepped into the starting five. Just stepping in, the senior having an unbelievable campaign uh, since Lamb has been down and just, uh, just something that Vermont will need to continue and try to defend their title. Our first look at Jairus Lyles wearing number 10. He's a grad student, had some options to depart UMBC after last season, but unfinished business, according to his head coach, second year head man Ryan Odom, and back now for his grad year. UMBC won 21 games a year ago, 14 more than they did the previous season in Odom's first year. Just five to shoot here for Lyles off the top of the key pick. Heading left on Urquhart, kicks to the corner. Good if it goes, and it does. Arkel Lamar, who can knock that shot down. This UMBC team lives on the three ball. Again, a team that's shooting over 40%. Lamar, 48.3 from behind the arc. You know, taking 88 shots now, just uh, that's hard to do to be that consistent offensively. The dribble penetration as the shot clock went down. Lyles getting into the lane, finding him, and knocking it down the three. Lyles not only the America East leader in scoring, but also third in assists per game. And he defends Ernie Duncan coming off the 32-point game. That's one shy of his career high as the Cats beat UMass Lowell on Thursday down in snowy Lowell by 10 points as Everett Duncan answers with a triple. And you talk about, you know, uh, the three-point shot. Everett Duncan now 26 of 53 per, for the year. You know, just so close to 50%. That's hard. That's just hard. That's a lot of practice, and you can't leave him open. Step back elbow J from K.J. Morrow, Puerto Rican point guard who's very active defensively. Yeah, just again, somebody that uh, gets into the lane, his ability to, to penetrate and uh, finish at the elbow right there. And not afraid of Vermont, you know, they had some success almost knocking off the Catamounts last year down at UMBC and uh, his ability to create havoc in the middle of the floor. 3-3 three, three early on, 35th all-time meeting of the series that has been dominated by UVM. Five seconds to shoot. Duncan against Lyles, a great defender. Duncan leaning to his right, came up short, and there's Lyles affecting the game at the other end. Yeah, good defense right there by Lyles, stopping Duncan as the retrievers look to build on their 5-3 lead. Back iron from the grad student. And Trey Bell Haynes in transition. Draws some contact on Morrow. No put back, yes, from Henson. Great effort by Henson right there, running the floor, following that tip. Love seeing Trey uh, being aggressive and attacking the rim early on. 5-5 five five game. UMBC has not defeated UVM in a decade. The 2007-2008 season, UMBC beat UVM three times en route to an America East title. Offensive foul on UMBC. 21 wins in a row, but again, this is a different UMBC team than we've seen in years past. It, it is, you know, a very talented team. A team that's not very deep, you know, a few injuries right now, but uh, again, when you have Someone like Lyles, again, with the 22 points a game almost, but shooting over 44%. And you can't foul him because he's 83% from the line, you know, 43% from three, just a tremendous offensive player. 
Henson ducks to his left and banks it home. A second bucket for Peyton, who's starting to come alive. We mentioned earlier in the non-conference, you wanted him to be more aggressive, and now with Anthony Lamy, he almost has to. Yes, he has to. And again, you know, with with um, right there as the three is off the mark by Sherburn. With Peyton Henson, he's just so physically talented and so physically gifted. He just has to use that strength and size and just go to the rim and attack. And that was a move right there where he was able to do that and finish with the left hand to give the Cats a two-point lead. Halfway through the shot clock for the Catamounts with a two-point lead. Second game of the league slate for both these teams who are 1-0. UMBC came back to beat UNH midweek by four points as Ernie Duncan drives the baseline and banks it in. And I love this group offensively. They don't panic. You know, there was 10 seconds on the shot clock. Peyton Henson could have forced a shot. Drew Urquhart got the ball in the corner. He could have forced the play. They kept going and going, and what do they do? They get a layup with two seconds left on the shot clock. Deep three from Morrow, too short, and Henson the rebound. 9-5 game. And that's what uh, you know want. You want UMBC doing that, and great blockouts there by Vermont. Bell Haynes double clutches. That's what he does best, finishing at the rim. Yeah, getting into the lane. The ball was deflected. Good hands right there defensively by UMBC, but the strength of, of Bell Haynes to gather it and finish to give the Cats an 11-5 lead. We could be in for a high-scoring affair. These two teams both score more than 75 a game. Morrow wide open this time and hits. Yeah, Trey Bell Haynes getting, uh, got caught up on the screen, got hit, and... Uh, Morrow was left wide open, got the three to go, and let everybody know about it. Trey Belhaines may be bleeding from his lip. That gets us a stoppage. 15-25 to go in the first half. 11-8, UVM with the lead. Talk about my swimming story, too, if you want. Flash with it. I am. This is going to. Uh... That was not even close. Yes, that was a three. Oh my goodness. this turn to you to see a little more? Would you prefer that at an angle? I don't care. Um, I can see it. You sure? Yeah. Sorry. It's good where it is, yeah. You all right? Yeah. Welcome back to Frigid Burlington here on a Saturday night in America East Play. Alistair Ingram, Bernie Siplicki here with you. 11-8, Vermont the early lead in a primetime America showdown. UVM shooting five of seven from the field. A lot of focus right now, Bernie, on UVM's defense, defending against a very talented offensive team, but this team continues to excel offensively in what could be a very high scoring game. Yes, they are, you know, five of seven, like you said, frigid outside, but warm inside. Vermont shooting over 70% uh, for the game, five of seven, and the, the misses they had were good looks. So again, offensively, they just got to continue to execute and try to keep this UMBC team at bay, a team that is just so explosive offensively. Retrievers averaging 79 points a game to lead the conference. Catamounts 76 points per game. Two good shooting, efficient offensive teams. Matching up for the 35th time in the series. Cam Ward into the game and drains a three. He came in for Trey Bell Haynes and knocks it down. Cam Ward, I tell you right there, just a, another senior stepping up off the bench and uh, knocking that three again. Patience by Urquhart at the end, kicking it out to Cam, who finds that, uh, finds that three to go down. Typical UVM balance. The Catamounts already with five players in the scoring column. There's the second tray from Arkell Lamar, who UMBC thinks at one point, only a sophomore now, 
could be a dominant player in this league. No question about that. As uh, you know, Lamar averaging 14 points a game. Another guy, again, shoots it deep for over 48%, and uh, just really smooth right there, and uh, got that to go down his second triple of the evening. He's shooting 48% from three. Duncan took some high contact from Lyles midway through the shot clock. UVM by three. Ward tries his luck again and gets fouled. And that's Cam Ward again, just getting it done offensively, so efficient. Um, he made that first one. Good to see that first one go through. Now we'll get to the line for three. Mental mistake from KJ Mora, who's a very aggressive defender. That time it hurt him. Cam Ward, a rare trip to the foul line, just three of seven this year. Rattles off the first one. He was at 63% last year. And Birdie, in the absence of Anthony Lamb, the bench has gotten a little bit more active for John Becker, and Cam Ward has played well last couple of games. You know, he has, and uh, again, Nate Rohr, Sam, Sam Dingba, uh, Steph Smith of the bench has really just stepped up their play, and uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard because you have a guy who's averaging 17 points and over six rebounds a game, rookie of the year, an all-league player, just someone who is so talented and an emotional player, you know, someone who gives you such a, a big lift, and not to have him it, it is hard, but uh, the Cats are, are stepping up. Ward just one for three, four-point game. Here's Lyles. Lamar tries his luck again. Three for three for number 33. Again, right in rhythm, you know, great pass. Caught it ready to shoot and knocks it down. His, you know, now 45 for 90 from the, uh, the three-point line for the year, 50%. That's hard to do when no one's guarding you, let alone in game competition. Urquhart with the up fake. Garrity the block. Ward head fakes a three, baseline Urquhart, way up in the air, down it goes. And again, the patience right there by the two seniors, you know, uh, recovering from the block shot. Ward getting into the lane, doesn't force it amongst the trees, kicks it to Urquhart, who knocks down the jumper. Cats lead 17-14. It's really a staple of this offense. Bypassing good shots to get better shots as Lyles misses the triple. And that, that's, you know, that's experience, that's senior leadership. You know, a good shot can become a great shot. You just have to have that patience and trust the offense. Here's Steph Smith, the rookie guard. Another good three-point shooter. And as he tries to shed the defender, he's called for an offensive foul. Yeah, just again, a lot of hands, a lot of contact moving your feet, but anytime you extend your arm like that, they're going to call that uh, that foul. And uh, tough break for Steph right there, but good defense by UMBC. That's the first team foul on Vermont tonight, 2 on UMBC. Jordan Grant into the game for the Retrievers, senior out of Bowie, Maryland, veteran team. Retrievers with 21 games in the air, also Nolan Garrity in, who grabs an offensive rebound, can't finish with the left. Good hands right there by Drew just to snatch that. Euro step in the lane from Bell Haynes. And it's deflected out of bounds. Fans wanted a foul they, they, on the drive. You know, they want the foul because of the swipe. And, you know, there was a swipe, but he got a lot of ball. You know, I mean, you, you swipe down at the ball. The, the referee was right there with the angle and, uh, you know, got that to uh, be deflected out of bounds. Plenty of time to shoot. UVM by three. Gonna reset the shot clock, I believe, here. It's down to 21. I don't understand why, but. I thought, the, I thought the, doesn't it reset on a foul? So why would it go, why would they lose nine seconds? Unless there was nine seconds. I think it was just end. deflected out of bounds. Oh, okay. I'm not sure there was a foul. Okay, well then that's why. Either, either way, kind of mouse don't score, and here comes UMBC in transition. Sometimes you stumble upon an answer that turns out to be correct. The blind squirrel. <laughs> Moore drives on Bell Haynes. That's a nice finish. Only 5'8", but using that size. Right, using the size, but again, using his you know, body to lean into Trey Bell Haynes and then scooping with the right hand so Trey can't get a piece of it. Uh, a nice cagey move. Second bucket from Mora. 
There's a guard from Puerto Rico. Henson hoists. And again, inside earlier, outside right there. They roar, catches the ball in the low block. They look to hedge. They kick it out to him. Peyton was ready to catch the shoot and got it to go. I think a word you can really apply to both these teams is versatility. A lot of guys that can score in and out. No question about that. And uh, Lyles hasn't gotten going yet. NBA range. That time from Lamar. It's his first miss from three. Henson this time up, fakes a three, step back. 20 to 16, the UVM lead. Catamounts are 10 and 5 on the year, UMBC 10 and 6. Both 1 and 0 in conference play. Henson short. from the corner this time, too short. Yeah, I could tell when he released it, his shoulders really, he wasn't into leaning into his jumper that much, uh, hence why it was short. Mora knocks down his second tray. He kind of hesitated, but right between the eyes. Yeah, just knocks it down, gave a little jab stack, got it back, got it to go. And just, uh, again, a, a game or 10 points on the evening. Moore started the last 11 games for UMBC. Led the league in steals a year ago. A member of the all-defensive team. Henson skips. Bell Haynes a rare three. That's off the mark. And UMBC trying to take its first lead since the early stages. Just the one lead change so far. UMBC led three zip in the first 32 seconds, but that was it. Moore drives. Lamar, not trigger shy. And that's the second straight miss from three after draining his first three. Yeah, well, if I was as good a shooter as he was, I would not be trigger shy for sure. Pull up from Steph Smith. They can't lose him in transition. He comes down the lane. Nobody picks up the ball. You got to stop the ball in transition. Gets that three to go. Shooting about 50% from downtown this year. Had a six for six game from long range against Marquette in the non-conference schedule. Both these teams fairly tested in their non-leagues. UMBC played the likes of Arizona, third at the time, and Maryland. We all know about UVM's non-league schedule. Playing some of the toughest mid-majors in the country and also Kentucky. And the season opener gave the Wildcats all they could handle. Bell Haynes in transition, another Euro step and lays it in. Yeah, and it was all set up by the great defense by Nate Rower, the big guy from Underhill, Vermont, stopping the dribble penetration, getting to head to Trey by Haynes, gets the Euro step, gets it to go. Catamounts take a six point lead with 9 12 to go in the first half. Well, it's a little 5 nothing run for Vermont to take a six-point lead. And Trey Bell Haynes, one of the best transitional guards in the conference. Yes, he is. Again, really loves to attack the rim and, and get, get to it. Got a couple of layups that he's finished already, uh, four points. But again, you talk about the balance of Vermont with 25 points that they've scored. They have seven guys who have scored and just a, a great balance with no one more than five. So just... Uh, uh, a, a tremendous 
you know, balance offensively. And, you know, you look at UMBC, um, two guys, a guy with nine, a guy with eight, and Miles, the guy we expect to go off only with two, but doing a little more facilitating, hasn't tried to force the issue, but ready to explode at any moment. It's game number three for UVM without their leading scorer, Anthony Lamb, who's out with a fractured foot. Foul's going to go on UVM away from the ball. Some puzzled looks on the Catamount bench. Lamb expected potentially to be back at the end of the regular season. He was averaging 16 points and six rebounds a game. Yeah, you know, it'd be great to get him back, and, and hopefully that is the case. But, uh, you know, he's got to take care of himself and make, make sure he's healthy as you never want to uh, uh, mess with your feet, that's for sure, because that's the livelihood of any basketball player, you know, your feet and your knees. And got to make sure you're, he you're healed, and uh, we wish him nothing but the best for a speedy and quick recovery. Put back won't go from Urquhart. Once again, Bell Haynes pushing the pace. Yeah, another Euro step right there by uh, Trey Bell Haynes. Didn't get it to go. Urquhart right there with the follow, but uh, no to do. And just like that three pointer right there by UMBC. Good looks by everybody, but nothing going down right now. 11 of the 16 shots the Retrievers have taken have been threes. That was the first for Sherburn who shoots 45%, backdoor cut from Steph Smith. Great uh, find from Urquhart. Uh, great cut by Smith, great pass by Urquhart, almost reminiscent of the UMBC women's offense earlier today against, uh, against the University of Vermont. UMBC running a nice set like that on numerous occasions to, uh, to get some back cuts. Uh, couldn't get a victory against the Catamounts, but uh, some, some good offensive stuff done there. Is that a little flex from UVM? <laughs> Sometimes, yes. Flexing their offensive yeah. muscle. A 72-58 win for UVM down in Baltimore today. And that's on two short on the two ball from Max Portman just off the bench. UVM right now on a 7-0 run. Well, again, not giving up any second chance opportunities, contesting every, every shot. And again, Lyle's only taking three shots here in about 13 minutes. And one down low, Ernie Duncan. Another great pass by Urquhart. Great cut by Duncan. Gets it. You know, keeps the ball high, gets the hoop, gets the harm, puts the Cats up 10 with 7.25 to go. 10-point lead, 9-0 run for the Catamounts, the reigning champs on a roll in Burlington. Respect is hard work, respect is dedication. Respect is earned on the court or on the field. Respect doesn't judge based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Respect is being the first conference to partner with the You Can Play Project. And the first conference in the LGBT Sports Safe Founders Club. Respect coaches, players, and the game. Respect similarities. Respect differences. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Tough. Powerful. Versatile. It's a cat. Equipment you want, features you need, support you can trust. Now you can get a cat. Because for a limited time, Milton Cat is offering 0% financing for 60 months on most machines. Now you can at Milton Cat. I don't think you can overstate how big of an advantage it is to be playing a championship game in front of your home crowd. Standing room only, and just at the end, like having everybody rush the court, it's like a surreal feeling. Obviously that shot, you know, has been a, a big part of this program's history, and they did a lot of winning here, and that's why I came here. We had that opportunity, just gotta take it. Just to go out uh, as a winner. Cut down the nets at home. Win at home, win it all. Our house rules. Our house rules. Our house rules. Well, it's all UVM right now, a 10-point lead, and we've seen a couple of outstanding passes from Drew Urquhart the last two possessions. Yeah, tremendous cut by Ernie Duncan right there. Drew Urquhart facilitating the last two possessions, the back cut to Steph Smith, that right there to Ernie Duncan and the Catamounts, you know, offensively. Now 12 of 21 from the two, uh, four of six from the three, and just uh, really having, doing some nice things offensively to bolster this 10-point lead. So Ernie Duncan trying to cap off the N1 here. Outstanding foul shooter, nearly 88%. He's coming off that 32-point game against UMass Lowell, 10 of 11 from the fields. And it's that next guy up mentality for UVM. 
When one, go, one guy goes down, another one steps up. And that's exactly what the Cats have done in their two games without Anthony Lamb. Grant feeds it down low, and the layup goes. First bucket for Max Portman, junior from Wichita Falls, Texas. You know, great catch right there by Portman. Gathered it, you know, ripped it away from the defender, and then was able to go up and gather to end the Vermont run right there. Catamounts up nine. Portman, a JUCO transfer, played at Temple College in Texas. His father, Kurt, played at Wisconsin in the late 80s. For your shot, that snaps a lengthy UVM run. It was 10 0. And a nine point game, six and a half to go in the first half. Urquhart to fade away. Not much he can't do right now. No, nah, that was tremendous defense by UMBC. Had it right down to the end of the shot clock, and uh, that that fade away by True. Drew, if you if that's going, you know, you just kind of tip your hat to the offensive player and say, great shot. Nice bank shot at the other end by Joe Sherburn. We talked about Urquhart a few games ago about a, a candidate for sixth man of the year. Not sure he gets a chance to win that now. He's going to be starting for quite a while if he keeps playing this way. Well, I mean, you know, you look at him. He's got 6.6 .6 rebounds, four assists already, no turnovers. Just really, you know, able you know, to do so many things and shows versatility. You, he just, you can just sense another level of confidence when he has the ball offensively right now, and he should have that. Fouls on Grant. Fourth team foul on UMBC. Six to go in the first half of play. Again, good balance as always for UVM. Urquhart with a team high six. But almost every catamount that's played so far has scored. Yeah, just uh, again, just the contributions and you know, no, you know, there's a lot of really good players. You know, that the superstar level. You know, you can talk about a couple different people, but you know, again, just so well balanced understanding their roles, knowing their strengths and weaknesses, and that is what makes a team a great team, and that's why this team is great. Everett. Ernie to Everett, just off the mark. Great tip out, though, by looked like a combination of Henson and Urquhart and a fresh shot clock. Yeah, you know, again, the big fellas using their length to uh, bat it out, and Vermont, uh, long shot, long rebound, Cats gather it. Double clutch from Urquhart in the paint. What a first half from Drew. Uh, you know, a great, but a great pass right there by Trey Bell Haynes. Not panicking inside the lane. Drew catching it, keeping it high, high and soft off the backboard. Gets it to go. There were a ton of players in the circle there, and Bell Haynes somehow just found a way to loft it over the top to Urquhart. Lefty finish for Portman, his second bucket. And again, another cat, another good catch, another good finish. Dribble penetration, leading to easy baskets on both ends of the court offensively. Two for three shooting for Portman down low. He was 0 for 4 against UNH midweek as UMBC came back from eight points down with 13 minutes to go. And there's the fifth team foul on UMBC. Again, Trey Bell Haynes with the penetration. UMBC foul and, and the axe, so he'll go to the uh, he'll go to the line. That's two now on Jordan Grant and two previously on KJ Mora. So a couple of retrievers in foul trouble in their backcourts. Okay, yeah. I, I was surprised they were putting him at the line, and it's, uh, it's on the pass. Mora is back in. Grant to the bench. Daniel Akin, one of the starting forwards, back in as well. For Ryan Odom, second-year head coach of the retrievers. John Becker, his opponent tonight, looking for win number 150 at UVM. Duncan blows by Lyles. Ball deflects out of bounds. Saying it went off Duncan last, but it hit, uh, but it hit a UMBC player before it went out. Ryan Odom pleading his case. Cats will have 13 seconds with, with, with which to work, and Bell Haynes goes to the bench for a breather. Drew Arkart. Has proven that he can knock down the three this season. Wasn't part of his game and really until this season. Here's Henson in the lane, and he gets fouled. And that's that's the move that you're talking about. Vermont loves to run a little curl for Peyton. Having him with the ball in his strong hand going to the rim right there. He's able to power through and uh, get that foul and get, get to the line. Fouls on Sherburn. That is his first, team's sixth. Cats one away from the bonus, and Henson goes to the stripe. Just under 69% so far this season. Eight points in the first half so far for Henson. 
Sam Dimba comes in for Urquhart, who gets a big round of applause. You hear some Drews in the crowd. And a great opening stint there for the Vancouver native. 8.7 rebounds, four assists uh, in the first, uh, you know, like 15 minutes and change. Just uh, a very, very solid first half for Drew Urquhart. For UMBC, starting a three-game road trip tonight. They'll go to Maine on Wednesday, then UMass Lowell on Saturday. Catamounts play their next couple at home, a three-game homestand, active hands. Cam Ward floats with the left and gets the roll. Again, out in transition, running the floor. Good defense, leads the easy offense. Cam Ward getting up, getting two. Six in the game for Cam Ward on two of two shooting. 13-point lead, the largest of the first half for the hosts. Mora, off-balance three. And that's what he can do. You know, he can knock down those uh, three-point field goals, shooting 42%, closer to 43. He's got a couple here tonight. He's got 13 for UMBC, almost half the Retrievers' points. Retrievers now 6 of 13 from three. They're 1-3 away from 200 on the season. They entered the game with 54 more than any other America East team. Lead back down to 10. UMBC has four players among the top 50 in the country in three-pointers made per game. Sherburn's one of them. Picks for Lamar, who's got three triples already. Goes to the rim and ding by the block. A great anticipation by Dingbo right there. That's what he does. A very good athlete with great timing. Henson, the flush at the other end, and John Becker wants a timeout. Yeah, just a great play right there. Peyton Henson going down the middle of the lane, catching the ball, one dribble with authority, and 28 lead with 3.17 left in the first half. Back here in Burlington, defense leading to offense. It all starts with Sam Dingba. Yeah, just again anticipating the dribble penetration. Steph Smith bringing it up, finding Peyton Henson running the floor. UMBC doesn't get back, and Peyton gets to throw it down for two. Team high nine in the game for Peyton Henson. UVM's lead is 12, one shy of a game high lead. You know, and this is all well and good, but again, there's something out there that uh, Jarius Lyles has not put his handprint on this game yet, and, it, and he will. And so when is it going to happen, and will Vermont be able to sustain it? Here is Lyles, averaging 21 points a game. Scored more than 600 last year for UMBC. Just the third player ever to do it, and steps in the lane on Akin, making his second straight start tonight. No, nope. we got a problem with the net here. 
If only we had someone tall who could fix it. Uh, you, you still might need a ladder for that one. They're going to play on. Do it at halftime. And simple inbound, backcourt pressure from UMBC. Retrievers went 9-7 and seven in America East last season. Almost knocked off UVM at home last year. Had a huge comeback before eventually falling by three, 77-74 in one of the games of the season. Belhane spins and kisses off the window. Yeah, just a tremendous offensive execution right there by Trey Belhane, using his size advantage to get into the lane. Again, high and soft off the glass, get it, gets it to go. Trey's eighth in the league in offensive efficiency. Aachen one dribble. Sherburn can't hit. Yeah, good defense by Vermont. Uh, had a chance for a potential easy two, but how, you know they kicked it out. Had a great look at the three. Sherburn just off the mark. Vermont again holding UMBC to only one shot. Two minutes to go in the half. UVM patient offensively, leading by 14 points against UMBC, trying to make it 22 in a row in the series. Belhanes can't get the kind roll that time. And here's Lyles up the floor, still scoreless. It's been all more in the first half, and that's his fifth three. Four three, I should say, the first half, 16 overall. Yeah, four of five from behind the arc. Just uh, again, you can't, you stop in one, but you, you can't leave the other that open, and he made you pay. And that game we mentioned at UMBC last year, between the two schools, Moore had 22. Already 16 tonight. Bell Haynes peering into Urquhart. Skips to the corner for Henson, drives, double clutches and finishes. And again, you know, you got to respect his ability to shoot the three. You push out on him, puts it down one hard dribble and finishes at the rim. Obviously, you, you'd love to have Anthony Lamb, but do you think the absence of Lamb has help Peyton Henson really find his game? Well, you know, again, I, I think, you know, I think there's more of an understanding that you have to be more aggressive offensively and that uh, you, know, you become someone who is more of a first or second option than maybe a second or third option or even fourth option. So, you know, just the, the onus that you know that uh, you also have a little more free reign to, to do that as well offensively, and he's definitely answered that call. And that'll be a charge on Urquhart. Aachen trying to contact. Just the third team foul on UVM the entire half. Yeah, you know, good defense right there. You know, you, you, you bounce and you create that contact. First time, okay. Second time, maybe. Third time, you know, it's going to be a charge more often than not. And, uh, you know, for Vermont, only three team fouls like you mentioned. And I don't think, uh, you know, UMBC's been to the foul line here in the fr entire first half. So just, uh, again, Vermont not giving up any offensive rebounds, not sending UMBC to the foul line. A good recipe to have a 13-point lead. The rebounding right now, 18-9 UVM. UMBC slowing the pace here. Two-second differential, Lyles again. Scoreless in the first half. There are not many times you can say that about this talented grad student. Catamounts had uh, three fouls to give and use one here. That's on Ernie Duncan. Not sure if it was intentional, but ends up being a fairly good foul. Yeah, well, I, I think you can. I, I, I think I think now on the catch, you know, let 1,001, 1,002, and then maybe you give another one. You know, no one, no one um, you know, Steph Smith has two, but other than that, you know, Ernie Duncan has one and Drew Urquhart now has one. So in terms of, you know, you can pressure and, and you want to commit that foul. It comes in to Lyles. Shot clock is turned off and Bell Haynes reaches in again. And that, that's, that's a good defensive strategy right there. And they still have one more to give. You know, I think, I think now, depending upon where they're going to, UMBC catches the basketball, if they catch it closer to half court, you might want to foul one more time. If it's below the foul line on the inbounds pass, I think you just kind of let it go. It comes in the Lyles, and a whistle from behind the play. Crowd thought, they bailed UMBC out. Bell Haynes certainly thought he had a clean strip. Yeah, it's a tough break right there for UVM. I don't know if Lyles fell, if they got tangled up without really looking at it. I can't cast judgment right there. 
So, but now, more importantly for both UMBC and Vermont, because that's the second foul on Trey Valhains, he has to come out. UMBC, you know, with 3.3, got to attack the rim right away. Lyles against Duncan, pulls for three, and he remains scoreless at halftime. And UVM leads by 13 with 44 points in the first half. Catamounts using the home crowd and the frigid temperatures to their advantage in Burlington. There's just something about Vermont. It's more than green mountains and maple syrup. It's about the people. It's what makes us strong. No other company has symbolized Vermont's strength and independence more than Vermont Mutual. The only place to purchase Vermont Mutual policies is through local independent insurance agents. Vermont Mutual is the oldest insurance company in our state and also one of the highest rated in the nation. For your home, auto, and business insurance, visit Vermont Mutual online to find a local agent near you. my debit card. Do you guys do instant replacement? What just happened? Check your wallet. No. No way. Your debit card should arrive in seven to ten business days. It's time to bank human again. Get debit cards on the spot and deposit checks right from your phone at TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. The America East Women's Basketball Championship in Portland. Coming back to Maine, especially Portland, being so close to family was an amazing feeling. The atmosphere was phenomenal. Maine has a great support system, especially towards basketball. Portland is a great area. I'm not far from it. There's such great scenery. I love visiting there. Visit Portland for the 2018 America East Women's Basketball Tournament, March 3rd and 4th at the Cross Insurance Arena. Tickets are on sale now. Hey, Portland, we'll see you in March. Food for thought. It's more than a common phrase. It's the intellectual nourishment that surrounds us at the University of Vermont. Those ideas. That atmosphere, those classes that get us up in the morning. And keep us up at night. Food for Thought connects us to other hungry thinkers. Thinkers who will change your world. Like this one. Or even this one. All the food for thought in the world is on the menu at the University of Vermont. Let's dig in. Just couldn't get there in time to keep it on side. Now Drobot steps through one and around another. Drobot from the slot, a save made by Myers, and she hangs on, including two in the first period. As a shot for the point is kicked aside, rebounds loose, and another save made by Myers in the glove. Salas leaves it ahead. Now here comes Parent, Blair Parent. Has someone go to the net, now drops it back. Pat save, rebound, glove save made by Melissa Black. Have mercy. Keep it in. Here's Ricard. Left wing side for a shot, they score! A power play goal with 2.04 left in the second, puts Providence on the board, 1-0. Goes off of Kerrigan, an onside play for Granado. Granado steps through one, trying to get the backhand loose. Now turns to the forehand side of the net, they score! Everybody forgot about the player on the left. Now back the other way, a two-on-one. Ricard crisscrosses with Boquist. Ricard with a shot, she scores! Now Boquist, sharp angle, and she scores! Took Melissa Black by surprise a little. It's in their own end, so the Catamounts with a chance to four-check here. 
Off the wall and out. Boquist to the empty net. And Boquist will get her second of the night and salt this one away officially for the number eight Friars. Final. Welcome back to Burlington, Tom Brennan Court, halftime, where UVM leads UMBC 44 to 31. Alongside Bernie Saplicki, Alistair Ingram here with you, and Bernie, a fairly tight game early in this one, but UVM really jumping out to a sizable lead, a balanced scoring attack, and uh, again, a team missing their leading score right now in Anthony Lamb, but really doesn't look like it. No, just again, guys stepping up, you know, Peyton Henson, 11 points, Drew Urquhart, 8 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, you know, almost uh, triple-double alert uh, time <laughs> right there. But, you know, other guys, Trayvon Haynes with 6, and Cam Ward with 6 off the bench. Just so many different players stepping up, and uh, but more impressively was the defense that Vermont played in the first half. And you look at a Jarris Lyles, one of the top scorers really in the region, not just the conference in the Northeast, and a guy that with zero points on 0 of 3 shooting, that's a, a huge credit to UVM's team defense. Right. Uh, you know, again, just uh, not taking any shots, but again, not forcing anything. He has three assists. He has done a really nice job, you know, not trying to force the issue, but he's had people, you know, pick him up. You know, K.J. Mora, 6 of 7, 4 of 5 from 3 for 16, leading the way. So Lyles can explode at any time. Uh, UVM playing a, a sound game so far. K.J. Mora with uh, a team-high 16 off the bench, uh, I should say, in the starting lineup for UMBC. And the only other player near double figures for the Retrievers is Arkel Lamar. It's halftime in Burlington, and we're back with your out-of-town scores after this as the Catamounts lead by 13. Thank you. 
you not got one of these? I was looking at that, but it's, yeah. it wasn't a halftime. Mm -hmm. We're back here in Burlington, 44-31, UVM leading UMBC at the break. It's time now for a check here. Out-of-town scores that are brought to you by Canon Solutions America. Some men's action earlier on today. UNH with a 64-61 victory against Albany, sending the Great Danes to a 0-2 conference record to start. Another tight one between Maine and Binghamton, 76-73. Black Bears take that one. And at the half, Stony Brook with a three-point edge on Hartford, 38-35. And as we mentioned, Bernie, earlier on today, the UVM women's team with a convincing 14-point win against UMBC. So the Catamounts here at home against the Retrievers, 44 to 31 lead. We're back after a couple of minutes with the start of half number two. I thought he was telling us we had to carry him through the half. No, I, I saw 118 on here. So I figured I had time to let you say something, but. Tennessee. Play a team three times in a season. It's never easy. I don't think Tennessee is very good. Yeah. We just want a lot of points scored tonight. Yeah. Not the over. I got it at 38 because I did like a little tease, but it's like 48. And we're back here inside Tom Brennan Courts at Patrick Jim alongside Bernie Saplicki, Alistair Ingram here with you as the Catamounts and the UMBC Retrievers get ready for the second half. And Bernie, we expected a high scoring affair between these two teams, but UMBC's got some work to do in the second half. You know, they do, you know, they still shot the ball adequately. You know, they were 20, uh, 12 of 27 for 44% from two, seven of 17 from three for 41 percent which is above their you know you know right at their season average as their season average is right around 41 but uh, only one offensive rebound didn't go to the foul line uh, both teams took really good care of the ball vermont had two turnovers one was a charge on drew urquhart and um you know and umbc had three so very good offense that uh, was played and umbc to start the second half comes out with a little one two two zone see how vermont attacks it they kick it out immediately to everett duncan Hits the back iron, tracks down his miss. And Urquhart tips it out to Ernie Duncan. But again, you know, you go inside. Again, you want to attack a zone. You got to get the ball to the middle of the floor. That's what they did. Everett Duncan had the wide open three. Uh, was a little long, but uh, again, the second effort by Vermont gives them another opportunity. Ernie Duncan a little bit too short. Catamounts are led by Peyton Henson with 11 in the first half. K.J. Moore has a game-high 16. 
And two great looks by, uh, by the Duncan brothers right there against the zone, and you want them shooting that every time. And now let's see if UMBC can get Mr. Lyles going here offensively. Lyles, the American East leader in scoring 0 for 5 in the first half. Comes off a pick from Lamar. Urquhart thought he had a clean block, but Lyles will get a trip to the free throw line. You know, Drew did everything right right there, except for at the end he, you know, tried to ex bring his hand down to swat at the basketball. And any time you do that, you, uh, you're you going to get that foul called. And Lyles now gets to the foul line where he is 83% on the year. He sees the ball goes through the basket for the first time, and that, uh, you know, just kind of gives everybody that collective sigh of relief if you're a UMBC fan because uh, and he's the kind of guy who can explode for 30 points and a half as uh, an uncharacteristic miss on that second free throw. He's certainly a tough guy to hold down for an entire game. Hey, and UVM coming in, the focus really was on the defensive end. John Becker's got to love what his team has done so far tonight against one of the more dynamic offenses in the league. Ernie Duncan top of the key. Three straight three-point misses for the Duncan brothers. You know, but again, you got the, the, the right guy shooting shooting the ball from, from deep. Ernie shooting 44% and Everett shooting over 48%. Uh, you got to live with that. A foul on Everett Duncan. His brother Ernie is the top three-point shooter in Vermont history. Two quick fouls on UVM, which really wasn't in foul trouble at all in the first half. That allowed them to give a bunch of fouls in the closing minute. Right, and you just see just kind of another level of aggressiveness offensively by UMBC in the first couple of possessions, especially off the dribble. Lamar knocked down three quick threes in the first half. He goes baseline this time. Urquhart the rebound. Yeah, just a good defense right there by Henson. Urquhart gets another, another rebound. Henson steps into a three. Cats are getting pretty good looks. Just can't knock them down to start this half. I mean, they went four of seven in the first half. You know, they missed a couple good hands right there. Vermont in transition, but even better hands by UMBC. Two on two the other way. Lamar will back it off. 20th steal of the season for Arkell Lamar. UMBC leads the league in steals. Coming off a season high 13 against UNH. Tried to lob it down to Akin. And there's the third team foul on UVM. And the third foul on Trey Belhanes. Right there with a the hold. Again, there was that foul toward the end of the first half where the second foul. Yeah, there looked yep. to be minimal contact. Lyles maybe fell down, and now you've got to sit Trey. You know, now so some very important minutes for uh, for Steph Smith. Sherburn to the ground against two Catamounts. Held ball. It'll stay with UMBC. 12 seconds left to shoot. And, you know, you just got to love that. Uh, you know, Steph Smith coming into the game and getting the opportunity just all over the floor. Every possession so important. That ball is like gold. You got to hold on to it and maintain it. You want to have possession of it. And it stays with the team in gold. Lows off the screen. Sherburn can't hit. Fouls on the floor, though, and it's going to be on UVM in the rebounding action. Yeah, that's going to be on Urquhart on the block out. A little too much hold. That's his third. That's, that's huge right there. Going to have to go to the bench and uh, go to Sam Dingba to bring him in for Urquhart. So right now, the, yeah, the depth and the te uh, you know the depth of the Catamounts to be tested here as UMBC, the aggressor here, got the Catamounts in foul trouble with four team fouls in the first uh, two and a half minutes. Mora curls around Smith, swatted away by Dingba, his second block. Yeah, great, uh, great timing again by Dingba. Could have been a travel right there, but uh, again, Vermont, uh, Vermont, solid defensively right there. Dingba playing his role so far. Defensive presence, a block in each half. 
Seven to shoot for the Catamounts. Here's Smith. Everett Duncan with a head fake. Baseline ding, but has got to put it up. Good if it goes, and too strong. Never made contact with the rim. Yeah, you know, just again, the, the drop, you know, good play. He didn't see the ball into his hands. It loses it and uh, has to rush that shot that, uh, that, you know, wasn't close to force the shot clock violation. And for all the struggles, though, that um, Vermont has had offensively with the fouls, really only a, now a 1-0 one, one run. <laughs> You know, one free throw by Lyles, the only bucket in the first, uh, the only point in the second half. So, uh, you know, UMBC's had opportunities to cut into this lead and hasn't taken advantage of it. Henson picks up his dribble. Goes off the window, a little too strong. Henson now four of eight from the field. Great look, you know, just a nice patient move, got it to go. Neither team can find the range in the second half. Lyles the floater, and Henson the rebound. The deep freeze is moving inside to Patrick Jim right now. <laughs> <laughs> Offen offensively, both teams labeling, laboring. Duncan comes up short, slowly back to his feet. Lyles unable to finish. And the ball back to the Catamounts. Moore looking for Henson, and Peyton goes right to the basket to draw a foul. That's a good strong move by Peyton Henson right there to get that foul called. Sloppy offense uh, here in the first half, but the Catamounts taking a 44-32 lead. Well, some sloppy basketball both ways, to say the least, here in the second half. Peyton Henson trying to take things into his own hands. Yes, just again, uh, ball not going down for either team from the field. Henson just attacking the rim. Could have been a charge right there. Looked like uh, the UMBC defender was up straight and held his ground, but uh, just uh, nothing going on. You know, Vermont 0 of 6, UMBC 0 of 6. Uh, the only difference is... Uh, UMBC got to the foul line, you know, for uh, for two and made one, and that's the only point that's been scored here in the uh, in the second half. And two high octane offenses. UMBC leads the conference. You know, but even even with that being said, you know the you know Vermont shooting 50 percent and and UMBC hovering right around 40 percent. So you know again the ball still going in more often than not. Just. Uh, a little low in the action right now in the first uh, four and a half minutes. And it continues. Come on, Peyton. I think we have some sort of bomb cyclone in here. <laughs> Wasn't that at Lowell the other night for the Catamounts? Yes. I did not know that a bomb cyclone was a thing until yeah. a few days ago. Learn something new every day, right? Or at least try to. And today, really, the coldest day of the year. I certainly hope it's the coldest day of the year in Burlington. <laughs> negative temperatures all day. Brutal. 
And both teams ice cold to start the second half. Jordan Grant with the drive. Picked up a couple of fouls in the first half. That baby hook rolls off the rim. Lids on both rims right now. Yeah, and you know, again, Portman not uh, getting that to go. It was two of three in the first half. But again, what I really am most impressed with about him is, is he catches the ball first. You know, so many guys try to rush to make a play, but he gathers it and then tries to make a play. Ernie Duncan throws it away. Lyle's a nice stutter step, rises, and there is his first field goal. And again, you know, 0 for 4 from the three-point line, was thinking about Poland. Like you said, the hesitation, little inside out, explodes at the rim, gets it to go. UMBC down 11. Cats have done a fabulous job on the conference's leading score so far tonight. Duncan to Duncan. Offensive board comes out to Everett, and he banks it home. There's Everett Duncan, an uncharacteristic two right there. Only his eighth two-point field goal attempt, if I'm uh, uh, correct, uh, from, the, uh, from the field this year. But uh, always good to get that easy one after you missed a couple of threes to have that confidence to see the ball go in the basket. 13-point lead again. UVM's largest lead of the first half was 14. The baseline J from Portman. Yeah, again, just you know, playing within himself, within the offense. Good, uh, good ball movement by UMBC, getting into the middle of the lane, jump stopping Portman with the little, uh, you know, short corner jumper, and got it to go. Steph Smith tries to answer. Now the Catamounts have not made a three so far in the second half. 0 for five. Lamar was able to free up some space for himself there, but. He's gone a little cold since a hot start from long range. Grant to the floor against Smith. UMBC basketball. Mora gives up a three to Lyles. And here's Grant from outside. Rainbow three. And you know, again, we talk about good, you know, good shots versus great shots. Mora, who hit a bunch, could have could have taken one. Lyles, who had, you know, you want him shooting if there's seven guys on him. Passes it up to Grant, who gets a great wide open shot and knocks it down to give UMBC some momentum and cuts the lead to eight. Henson's got to save it on the baseline, 10 to shoot. Lead is under 10 from UVM. Steph Smith, up fakes, launches, and hits. And great patience right there by the rookie. Just catches it at the end of the shot clock. Shot fake, Lyle goes by, flying by. One hard dribble pulls up. Nothing but nylon to give the Catamounts that 11-point lead back. And more with a drive on Smith. Big bucket there for Steph Smith. UMBC was starting to get some energy going. Yes, they were. Starting to have a little more confidence and, uh, and, and feeling it. And uh, just again, at the end of the shot clock, uh, a huge shot by, uh, by Steph Smith. See how Vermont, uh, you know, defends right here. That's the first team foul on UMBC in the second half. Lyles off a pick. That was a three-point attempt and way too short. Been a tough night for the talented Jairus Lyles. Yeah, again, still doing a nice job facilitating. Has a bunch of assists out there and, and rebounds, but uh, just not seeing the ball go in the basket. And Wednesday at home, he had 27 against UNH. So again, but he does have that ability to just go off at any time. Toilet ball three from Smith, rims out. You know, so close, and then the rebound, Henson was right there, and uh, goes to the hands of Retrievers, a loose kind of ricochet ball back to UMBC. So a couple of, uh, couple of breaks for UMBC that they need to take advantage of here offensively. Grant's bounce pass hits off a Catamount leg, and it's out of bounds, and that gets us a stoppage in Burlington. Steph's missed three for the Catamounts, putting the host back up 11. 11 and a half to go in Burlington.
One minute. Five for 23, both teams. 30 seconds left. Five yeah. for 23, two for 12, two for four. Yeah. Back here in Burlington, where UVM leads UVM, uh, UMBC by 11 points. Alistair Ingram and Bernie Saplicki back here with you, and tough offensive start to the second half for both these teams. Yes, just, uh, you know, you look at the combined shooting of both teams in the first uh, eight minutes and 33 seconds, five for 23 overall, two of 12 from three, two of four from two. Hopefully those percentages will elevate as Lyles takes the inbounds pass as the shot clock is winding down, attacks the rim and gets a foul on Ernie Duncan. So UMBC now one away from the bonus. Lyles' second trip to the free throw line in the half. One of nine shooting today for Lyles, just of five rebounds and four assists. And you know, again, for someone who handles the ball so much, he's played almost, uh, you know, 29, the whole 29 minutes only has one turnover. So again, really takes care of the ball. As you mentioned, the assist, the rebounding, does a little bit of everything, just hasn't seen the ball go in, but still plenty of time to correct that as UMBC picks up full court after the free throws are made and the lead is down to nine. Urquhart leans in. That'll be a charge against Drew. That's his second charge of the half, and that's four personal fouls on the senior. He's had a fantastic night. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge um, charge right there. Good defense. You know, Drew did a nice job of breaking the pressure and uh, just came down and could have pulled it out but tried to attack, and UMBC uh, held its ground defensively as Portman picked up the charge. And that's a tough loss for the Catamounts as Urquhart had eight points, seven rebounds, four assists and uh, spent some time on the bench. And now Vermont going to a, a little bit of zone. Too strong from Grant. Lyles an offensive rebound. Thought he had drawn some contact, but pulls it out. Fresh shot clock for the Retrievers. Down nine. With nine gone by in the half. Grant's in front of his bench. Plenty of time to shoot for UMBC. Miles against Ernie Duncan. Portman, five to shoot. Turnaround from Sherburn, no good. Lyles an offensive rebound, but it's an offensive foul. Yeah, just uh, contact right there, Lyles, with a little bit of a, as they say, a little leg kick on Peyton Henson to um, knock Peyton Henson off his guard. His first team foul, or first foul, second team foul. Vermont on their heels a little bit. You can kind of feel momentum, uh, you know, going UMBC's way as they pick up full, with some full court pressure. In Vermont, you know, you have Steph Smith with three fouls. You've got Trey Bell Haynes with three fouls. Drew Urquhart with four. Great pass from Bell Haynes, and we're the finish at the rim. The big fella from Underhill going up with the hard and finish the flush to give the Catamounts the 11 point lead off the great pass from Trey Bell Haynes. Bell Haynes blowing by one of the most active defenders in America East. Another offensive foul on UMBC. Yeah, great defense by Cam Ward right there, getting in front of him. Arm gets extended. Charge called. Just when you think you know UMBC is building some momentum, Vermont makes a couple of plays to kind of take that away. Yeah, UMBC got it to eight. Steph Smith made the three. He got it down to nine. And then Bell Haynes with a great drive. Right, and you know, the finish by Roar, and now the, the defensive stop by Cam Ward to pick up that charge. See what Vermont does. Active hands from Grant, deflecting the ball away. Fourth steal of the game for UMBC. No. 
past the midway point of the second half. UVM 52, UMBC 41. Cats trying to make it 22 wins in a row against their rivals from Baltimore. Another rebound right there for Peyton Henson, his ninth as he approaches a uh, double-double opportunity. 12 points, nine rebounds, just a solid performance. UVM will slow the pace here at the offensive end, and Bell Haynes walked. Yeah, that's a good call right there, right in front of us. Uh, you know, caught the ball and just kind of started moving before he really put the ball down. Tough break right there for Trey. He just uh, again saw that uh, saw that opening and picked up that pivot foot. And again, UMBC again a chance to get back to within eight or nine, depending upon a bucket here. Go to the middle of the zone, and now out wide for Lamar, no good. And Bell Haynes rips down the rebound. Rennie Markey's player of the year right to the rim. Trying to draw some contact there, didn't get it, but UVM will keep the basketball. Yeah, and I think that's a good no call right there, you know, initiating the contact, getting into the lane. I think maybe even Ramont catches a break because uh, that, I don't know if that was deflected off a UMBC player. One thing we haven't mentioned about UMBC tonight, 8-0 at home. Two and five on the road. Still think one of the hardest things to do is win a college basketball game on the road. I, I don't care who, what, where, when, why, or how, uh, especially at the Division One level. It's it's uh, it's very very hard because the talent level is so so close now. Duncan underneath in some traffic rolls off the front of the rim. Bell Haynes back up and one. Again, just staying with it. Second effort, Everett Duncan, again, keeping it alive, almost getting it to go. Ball gets tipped out, Trey Bell Haynes grabs that rebound. There's Everett just battling, battling, doesn't get it to go. Nate Rohr tips it back, Trey Bell Haynes slices and dices. The hoop, the harm, gets to the line. 64% at the stripe for TBH this year. Gets the home roll, and his team is up by 14. That matches a game-high lead again. UVM with that answer factor. Every time they need a play, they get one from one of their key players. But it just doesn't feel like that big of a lead. You know, you say 14, you're like, wow, that's a lot. But it just hasn't had that feel uh, of that kind of, uh, uh, of lead. Morris had a hot night from long range. Not his best effort there. Way too strong. Yeah, early in the shot clock right there. And... Uh, didn't get it to go. Duncan squares up and hits. And it's you know, a 17-point game. Ernie Duncan right there knocking down that three. Had more in front of him. Jab stepped. He backed off. Pulled back. Gets the three to go. And the Cats balloon the lead to 17. And Lyles answers with a corner three and a timeout UMBC. It's just so pretty right there. The corner three from the, uh, from the corner to cut into the lead to make it 58-44 with 7.44 to go in the second half.
Ernie Duncan coming off a game in which he barely missed against UMass Lowell. A little bit of a quieter night for Ernie, but a huge bucket there. You know, and one of the things Ernie's been, he's been assigned to Lyles tonight defensively and done a, done a, had to expend a lot of energy over there. But uh, again, that nice little pullback jumper is just, uh, uh, again, just the cornerstone of his confidence offensively. Just uh, knocking in that three, his first triple on the evening. He's got eight points and a couple of boards, and uh, again, just done a nice job on Miles defensively. Yeah, I think he deserves a lot of credit. You, you look at Ernie Duncan, you think offense, you think the outside shot, but not normally recognized for his one-on-one -on -one defense. No, and, and again, just, uh, you know, what a challenge he was issued tonight. Uh, you know, arguably the best player in the league, and you got to, you got to do your best on him, and then he's he's done a very good job so far. And Lyles, two of 11 shooting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. UMBC almost stole the ball in the backcourt. Bell Haynes down awkwardly, right back to his feet. Yeah, the Catamount fans held their breath for a split yeah. second. Yeah, thankfully uh, no injury there, but just uh, gets the ball and um, loses his footing. Traveling UMBC ball when we come back with the Cats up 14. Welcome back to Burlington. Seven and a half to play here on a Saturday night. Second league game of the season for Vermont and UMBC. Had a 14 point lead for the reigning champions and a big part of tonight's game, Bernie, has been the rebounding for the Catamounts. They are a plus 16 on the boards and have really made UMBC a one shots and done team. Yeah, only five offensive rebounds for UMBC, but uh, the second chance points are 13 to nothing in favor of the Catamounts, and uh, the lead is 14, so that says a lot right there. Just like Vermont, uh, points in the paint. They have 30, UMBC has eight. Uh, you know, UMBC 16 field goals that have been made, nine have been from behind the arc. Just had a quick look at John Becker, who's in search of his 150th win at Vermont tonight in his seventh year. Yeah, not bad. You do the math, that's a... Pretty good. Pretty good annual average. Yes. When you win 29 games in a season, that helps, which yes, they it, did last year. Yes, it does. That's good coaching, good talent. Sherburn throws it away. Trey Belhane skies, blocked away by Lyles. Second chance, and the putback goes. Athletic play by Lyles. Great, great hustle by Lyles to get back. Trey Belhane slowing up a little bit, trying to elevate for the dunk. Uh, Lyles bats it away, but uh, Trey sticks with it and gets it to go. Belhane's now with 11 for the game, four rebounds, couple of assists. Right at his season scoring average. There'll be free throws here for UMBC as uh, the Cats have 18 fouls. Yeah, it's on uh, Everett Duncan right there, his second. Again, like you said, team's eighth compared to four fouls for UMBC. And Morrow go to the line. Had a relatively a, a very explosive first half, all 16 points in the first half, and misses the front end of the one and one here. That makes him 19 for 26 this season. UVM's lead is 16. Game high lead for UVM in the second half is 17. 
Catamounts trying to make it four consecutive wins. After a heartbreaking loss in mid-December at St. Bonaventure, Roar rises and gets fouled. You know, just a great pass from Ernie Duncan to Everett Duncan on the cut. Everett catches it, doesn't even hold it for about a, a quarter of a second, drops it off to Roar, who gets the, uh, gets the ability to go to the rim, contested at the rim, gets the foul. Just a great, you know, just quick, smart basketball players, you know. Everett Duncan is, Nate misses that free throw. Just again, just knowing where people are, that's just good basketball instincts. Got him out shooting 48% from the field this season as a team, second in the league, 49% tonight. You know, in UMBC, a team that scores almost 79 points a game, you know, Vermont holding them to 44 right now. Illegal screen. That'll be the fourth on Akin and the sixth team foul. That's his fourth, team sixth. Everybody will be shooting down the stretch here. Now, you know, if you're UMBC, you got to get a couple of steals and a couple of uh, quick scores to try to get this lead to, you know, you know, 10 as quickly as you can. And if you're Vermont, you want to attack and just kind of balloon this and, and let UMBC that their chances of her a comeback aren't happening tonight. And the clock now, the Catamount's best friend. Midway through the shot clock, Ernie Duncan coming off a 32-point game. Busy stretch here for the Catamounts, their third game in six days. Duncan off the mark. Nate Rohr, the offensive rebound. Making the minutes count. Henson almost got that double clutch to go down. You know, I'd, I'd love, you know, that's a great pass and a, and a great move by, by Peyton. But you want to slow it down there? No, I, I want to see him take that ball and just go dunk it. Just like he did earlier in the first half, attack the rim and crush it. Don't don't leave it for that opportunity to fall off. Just go go finish it and go finish it hard. High tier drop from Bell Haynes off the mark. 61-44, 5.20 to go. Here's Lyles. Previously knocked down his first three. And Morris had a quiet second half. Kickball in the Catamounts. And, you know, for Peyton, that's going to be easier said than done, and it's easy for me to say that watching right here, and that might have been the right play. But I just, again, I think he's just too special of, of, a, of a player and, a, and an athlete to just kind of lay that in. Go ahead and use, use that ability and, and dunk it. Henson has a double-double tonight, 12 and 11. And 15 against Lowell. And it went on Thursday. Catamounts will get some rest after this one. They have a week off before hosting Stony Brook next Saturday. Check that. They go midweek to Dartmouth for a non-league game. That's only about an hour and a half away, though. Officials pointing UMBC's way. Crowd doesn't like it. The Retrievers basketball down by 17. The next league game Saturday against Stony Brook, and then Maine comes in next Monday. UMBC tonight starting a three-game road trip before their next five away from the Rack Arena, which will soon be replaced down in Baltimore. Their brand-new event center set to open fairly soon. Yeah, what a beautiful, uh, you know, facility they're going to have down there, and it's only going to help this program that is on the rise to get even better. They reach in foul on Jairus Lyles and a one-on-one -on -one for the Catamounts. It's been a frustrating night for Jairus Lyles. You know, it has, and, you know, again, he's, he's done so many good things, just hasn't been able to, to really knock out that, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that deep shot tonight, just really struggled, that uncharacteristic two of 11, one of uh, seven from three, just uh, way below his normal averages, but uh, too good of a talent. And, you know, he'll have better days ahead for sure. You think UVM viewed this game as a chance to make a statement to the conference that even without Anthony Lamb, they're, they're still the ones to beat? You know, I, I think they did that at Lowell. You know, I, I think it's harder, you know, to win a, at uh, on the road than it is at home. And, you know, they had to go to Harvard and win without him, and now they're on – on track to, if they've closed this one out, to be 3-0. and and yeah, you know, you want to make a statement because, uh, you know, 
it's just such a deep and good team as the travel is forced right there by the Catamounts defense. And again, you know, there's 423 left, and UMBC, again, the team that scores close to 80 points has 44. And after the Harvard game, Coach Becker said, you know, that was kind of Vermont basketball in terms of defense and rebounding and just kind of getting back to, to grinding it out. And you look at tonight with the rebounding margin, it, it's uh, 17. And defensively, they're holding this team to 44. Just uh, really going back to that old blueprint. Defense and rebounding wins championships. And if UVM holds on tonight, this will be a, a true Vermont win. Yes. Balanced scoring, standout defense, fundamentals, backdoor cuts like that. This is how this team won last year and how they've won this year. Right. And just, uh, again, great offense right there. Getting into the lane. Everett Duncan making the right read. Catching, finishing. Lead is... 21. First shot in the game for Brandon Horvath. That's off the mark in UVM. With three and a half to go, can take its time. Pretty impressive when obviously this still has a few minutes left, but if you win three games, two of which are on the road in six days without your leading score, that's a fairly impressive stretch. It is, it is, and just a testament to the depth and to the focus and the game planning, just, a, just great program wins. Bell Haynes, no. Everett Duncan, offensive rebound, and he's fouled by Grant. UVM actually didn't even get back into Burlington until yesterday as they had to deal with the bomb cyclone down in Boston. So free throws upcoming for Everett Duncan, and it's all Catamounts here in Burlington. Eleven for forty-eight. John Becker, three and a half minutes away from win number one fifty in his UVM career. Alistair Ingram, Brody Saplicki, back here with you as the Cats break the huddle. The defense has carried UVM here in the second half, holding UMBC to four total field goals. Four total field goals, sixteen percent, two of twelve from three, only three of five from uh, you know from the foul line is that really good defense is that you know not great offense because uh, UMBC has gotten good looks and you know just probably a combination of both and uh, you know Everett Duncan going to the line where he's got seven points six rebounds Peyton Henson 14 points 13 rebounds all 13 on the defensive end where Vermont now on the glass is plus 19. Catamounts on average a plus four team on the boards as the Cats can take this under three minutes. Now, yep. UMBC head coach Ryan Odom said that, granted, his team was playing well, but even without Anthony Lamb, he said this UVM team knows how to win. They have veterans. They've been here before, especially on their home floor, and he thought that was a big factor tonight. It, it is. You know, there's a comfort level, you know, for everybody on, the, on this UVM team. And like you say, you look on this floor, there's a lot of experience. The returning player of the year with the ball in his hand. Henson pops too short. Bell Haynes diving to the floor with his team up 21. Yeah, just again trying to get that extra possession. 
NBA range from Lamar. The toughest shots he's taken tonight have gone in. That's his fourth triple. Yeah, just now four of eight from behind the arc, uh, 12 points for the uh, for the game, and lead down to 18. Fairly quiet night, though, because he had three threes early. That's his first bucket in a long time, and he's a very dangerous scorer. Again, you know, again, this whole UMBC team can just, you know, if they're all clicking and they're all hitting shots, you can see how they're going to be a tough, a tough team to beat. But tonight, you know, the Catamounts defense was up to the task. And you give it a lot of credit to that guy, number 20, Ernie Duncan, who's headed to the line for a one and one He's helped Jairus, Ry uh, Jairus Lyles, I should say, to two of 12 shooting and one of seven from three. It's been the primary matchup tonight. It's taken this UVM team some time to really find their defensive identity. They lose Trey Wills, Defensive Player of the Year, Kurt Steidel, underrated defender. And it's, it's taken them a while to really get back to the way they played defensively last season. You know, and even defensively, Darren Payne, you know, coming off the bench as the sixth man of the year, blocking shots and patrolling the paint. Just, uh, you know, so many good players have graduated. But, uh, you know, as you, as you mentioned, even now with the injury to Lamb, the Catamounts starting to understand and fulfill their role as Peyton Henson comes out to a great round of applause, something he definitely deserves, 16 points, 13 rebounds. And again, the thing that's most impressive for me is all 13 rebounds on the defensive glass. Two minutes to go. Lamar hoists again, knocks it down. That was about 25 feet away. Yeah, just uh, deep. Knocks it down his fifth triple. He's got 15. Three point line's only a suggestion for Arkell Lamar. Second best three point shooter in America East this season, 48%. They'll advise foul on Brandon Horvath. Yeah, tough break right there for Horvath. 50 50 ball that uh, got a piece of, but a little too much contact after. Horvath, the rookie. Only played five minutes against UNH midweek. Spent last year at the Ken School in the post grad year in Connecticut. More free throws for Nate Rohr, the Vermont native. 17 point game with. 98 seconds to go. Yep. Ishmael Jabby checks in for the Retrievers. Yeah, checking out Lyles, who will um, go out. Seven rebounds, four assists, a block, but uh, eight points, you know, 13 below his average. Hasn't been held to single figures in a long time since the opening couple of weeks of the season as a teardrop from Mora goes. Ernie Duncan, one of uh, three cats in double figures tonight. And again, it's it's just a typical offensive night where you look at the, the box score and your leading score has got 14 and you're winning by 15. Yeah, just uh, just great balance. And, you know, again, we, we sound like broken records, just the, the, the depth, the ability to have different people on different nights step up. It's just uh, a true testament to all these guys and their ability to play and the unselfishness, which is the best part. Catamounts have had a lot of impressive wins so far this season, also some heartbreaking losses. This will be win number 150 for John Becker. Do you feel like this will be the win he's most proud of to this point? I think he's proud of everyone, you know, for sure. But, I, again, I think, you know, you talk about getting back to what he wants from our basketball to be. I think this is another step in that, that right direction. It's like saying, who's your favorite kid, right? Uh, I can't answer that. Everyone's got a favorite. No. Sorry. Not me. <laughs> if kids were wins, John Beck would have a lot. Yeah. He'd be 11 this year. <laughs> and you start forgetting names. Yeah, Trey Bell Haynes picks up his fourth foul again. Ninth team foul. It's a UMBC team that, uh, despite the fact they're on the rise, they. Still have got to try and find that next level, especially on the road. They're going to fall to 2-6 and six away from home. 8-0 and oh in Baltimore this year. But still a team that we could see uh, come March and a team that can certainly make some damage, especially if they can get home court in the quarterfinals. Well, and again, you get scared because they got the best player in the league, arguably. And a guy who can go for, you know, 30 to 40, and then you have other pieces around him that, uh, you know, when you can shoot the three-point shot, like they can do. They're, they're a very dangerous team on any given night. Moore bakes both at the line. He's got a game high 20. As the Catamounts take the clock under a minute. And Ernie Duncan forced to use a timeout. 
Yeah, don't want to turn it over right there. And uh, the double team came, and he was trapped right over half court. Good decision by Ernie right there. So again, the road ahead for both these teams. UMBC's got some traveling to do. They'll go back to Baltimore, fly to Maine to play the Black Bears on Wednesday, and then go down to Boston, face UMass Lowell. Finally back at home on the 15th against Hartford. UVM with the short trip to Dartmouth on Wednesday, but then back at home for their next two. Stony Brook Saturday and Maine Monday. You think the Catamounts are going to go a little stir crazy because they're going to be home for a while? They've been on the road for a while, so <laughs> they barely played any home uh, games this year. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be looking around like, you mean we can kind of, like, we don't have to pack our bags or, <laughs> or, or long, don't have to go get laundry or do anything like that? We can kind of hang around? Well, again, they had to stay an extra night down in Lowell after the huge storm down there, 15 inches of snow. So after the game on Thursday, they stayed the night, drove back, practiced, and have looked pretty fresh tonight against UMBC. They have, and, you know, they got to go down to Dartmouth and uh, – Get ready for that uh, for that battle to conclude their non-conference schedule. Bell Haynes spinning into the paint to finish. Nice strong move by Trey Bell Haynes right there to go to the rim and finish. He's now has 13. Catamounts up 17 and just waiting to finish this one out. Wide open down low is Portman. Nice game for him tonight, eight points off the bench for the Juco transfer from Texas. It's probably a little chilly tonight for him. <laughs> I think it's chilly for everybody. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the walk to the car. No. It'll be a little better with the victory for the Catamounts. Well done on the glass and defensively holding this explosive UMBC team to 56 points. Great balance offensively, just another total team effort and congratulations to Coach Becker on his 150th win. Dre Bell Haynes will dribble it out. Three Catamounts in double figures tonight led by a double-double from Peyton Henson and for the 22nd time in series history it's UVM over UMBC. For Bernie Saplicki our entire crew Alistair Ingram saying so long tonight from Patrick Jim. UVM takes it over UMBC. It's been a presentation of ESPN.